Please welcome the 109th mayor of the city of New York, Bill de Blasio, with his wife, Shalane McCray, daughter, Kiara, and son, Dante. The mayor is taking the oath on a Bible once used by President Franklin Roosevelt. It is altogether appropriate that he should do this. Please raise your right hand, state your name, and repeat after me. I, Bill de Blasio. I, Bill de Blasio. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. In the Charter of the City of New York. And the Charter of the City of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The office, the duties of the office of mayor of the city of New York. The duties of the office of the mayor of the city of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Our city government's first responsibility is to keep our neighborhoods safe, to keep our streets clean, to ensure that those who live here and those who visit can get where they need to go in every borough. But we know that our mission reaches deeper. We are called to put an end to economic and social inequalities that threaten to unravel the city we love. And so today, we commit to a new progressive direction in New York. We will expand the paid sick leave law because no one should be forced to lose a day's pay or even a week's pay simply because illness strikes. And by this time next year, fully 300,000 additional New Yorkers will be protected by that law. We won't Wait. We'll do it now. We will require big developers to build more affordable housing. We will fight to stem the tide of hospital closures. And we'll expand community health centers into neighborhoods in need so that New Yorkers see our city not as the exclusive domain of the 1%, but a place where everyday people can afford to live work and raise a family. We won't wait. We'll do it now. We will reform a broken stop and frisk policy, both to protect the dignity and rights of young men of color and to give our brave police officers the partnership they need to continue their success in driving down crime. We won't wait. We'll do it now. And we will ask the very wealthy to pay a little more in taxes so that we can offer full day universal pre-K for every child in this city and after school programs for every middle school child. And when we say a little more, we can rightly emphasize the little. Those earning between $500,000 and a million dollars a year, for instance, would see their taxes increase by an average of $973 a year. That's less than three bucks a day, about the cost of a small soy latte at your local Starbucks. Think about it, a five-year tax on the wealthiest among us with every dollar dedicated to pre-K and after school. Asking those at the top to help our kids get on the right path and stay there. That's our mission. And we do it to honor a basic truth 
that a strong economy is dependent on a thriving school system. We do it to give every kid a chance to get their education off on the right foot from the earliest age, which study after study has shown leads to greater economic success, healthier lives, and a better chance of breaking the cycle of poverty. We do it to give peace of mind to working parents who suffer the anxiety of not knowing whether their child is safe and supervised during those critical hours after the school day ends, but before the work day is done. And we do it because we know that we must invest in our city, in the future inventors and CEOs and teachers and scientists, so that our generation, like every generation before us, can leave this city even stronger than we found it. Our beloved city is no stranger to big struggles and no stranger to overcoming them. New York has faced fiscal collapse and a crime epidemic, terrorist attacks and natural disasters. But now, in our time, we face a different crisis, an inequality crisis. It's not often the stuff of banner headlines in our daily newspapers. It's a quiet crisis, but one no less pernicious than the ones that came before. It's a place that celebrates a very simple notion that no matter what your story is, this is your city. Our strength is derived from you working together we will make this one city. And that mission, our march towards a fairer, more just, more progressive place, our march to keep the promise of New York alive for the next generation, it begins today.